This study looked at 3,826 pairs of twins, which is a good way of determining genetic influence. The study found that genetics accounts for around 37% of instances of male homosexuality and other individual-specific environmental factors account for around 63%. So here is a scientific study of twins which shows that homosexual desire is not determined by genetics. The findings show that genetics could only possibly account for 37% of homosexual desire, whereas if was genetic, it would of course account for 100%. In fact this study and others like it go on to say that the vast majority of the determining factor for developing homosexual desire appears to be in non-shared environmental factors. Some studies postulate that this may include hormonal differences in the womb, but this is also where the actual free will, development of character, and choices of an individual would come into play. Free will? I thought we were all in agreement that homosexuality is not volitional, just as the examples of zoophilia, pedophilia, and necrophilia that Veselina gave earlier. Also Veselina seems to forget that these are twins, so a reasonable assumption is that postnatal child rearing and thus development of character are the same. These findings prove what theists have claimed all along, that homosexual desire is not genetic or inborn, but is in fact something that is developed later. Not really. Please refer to my earlier statement on the childhood development of twins. A similar study was done in Sweden in 2008 and its findings showed that among twins homosexual desire could only be 35% attributable to genetics. The results of the study by Queen Mary University of London include the following statement. The study shows that genetic influences are important but modest, and that non-shared environmental factors dominate. Prenatal factors. Certain traits are developed in the womb that do not depend on genetics. A rather mundane example of this is fingerprints. And in most cases homosexuality is something you're born with, not something you choose. To conclude such a thing would be a gross misrepresentation of the study findings. What the studies of twins have actually shown is that homosexual desire cannot be attributed predominantly to genetics at all. They show that non-shared environmental factors dominate. Of course from a secular naturalist perspective they have to attribute the cause to something physical, environmental or chemical as they do not want to factor in the free will of the individual, their character and its development, which is their own responsibility. What these non-shared environmental factors are which predominate in the cause of homosexuality are not defined by this study. Of course a naturalist will speculate on possible hormonal differences in the womb. However the non-shared environmental factors would also include any event, situation, experience one twin would experience which another would not. Among the factors outside of genetics or shared environment would also come in the most important factor, which is overlooked by naturalists, how we play a role in developing our character, the choices we make, the influences we then come into contact with, the general way we choose to react and develop our character aspirations and preferences. For example one identical twin may develop a vague interest in trains while the other doesn't bother pursuing that mild interest, however the one that does, may then feel inspired to become more involved, and by gradually increasing this pursuit eventually become obsessed with trains, while the other twin has developed a completely different interest in a similar manner. What science seems to neglect in its studies of behavior is the role of individual character, free will, choice which are all very important factors in how our character, morality and appetites develop. Instead they attempt to attribute everything to genes, chemicals or physical environments we have been subjected to, which is rather short-sighted and misrepresentative. So As I said already, we all seem to agree that homosexuality is not volitional, but it seems Veselina has clarified that statement on free will, referring to the various choices people make every day. All right point conceded. But again, I do not believe homosexuality is wrong and warranting of change. I already addressed the morality of homosexuality and I await Veselina's response on that. Every studies of both humans and animals that homosexuality is innate, natural and even normal in most mammals. 
According to geneticist Simon Levy in 1996, although homosexual behavior is very common in the animal world, it seems to be very uncommon that individual animals have a long, lasting predisposition to engage in such behavior to the exclusion of heterosexual activities. Thus, a homosexual orientation, if one can speak of such a thing in animals, seems to be a rarity. In other words, there may be cases where same-sex animals play with each other, but this should not be confused with some type of long-term preferred lifestyle, which is what homosexuality is. A dog on heat will attempt to mate with inanimate objects, and you would expect animals, which have lower intelligence, and yet at times a very high sexual appetite may attempt to deviate the natural order, in attempts to fulfill that appetite, as dogs do when on heat. Other examples cited by homosexual promoters usually amount to two same-sex animals spending time together, pruning or simply hanging around each other, none of which could be classes as a sexual preference or homosexuality. As the aforementioned geneticist said, homosexuality, if it exists at all among animals, is a rarity, not common or normal, as Pothalamus represents. Point conceded. However watch on Potteller's original video, one will find that Potteller does not claim that exclusive homosexuality is normal. Rather he establishes that homosexual behavior may be tied to general promiscuity, as he attacks creationists' claims that homosexuality as a genetic trait would swiftly be wiped out by evolution. I can't even stand to watch two guys kissing on screen. Seriously. I have to look away. But this is also where the actual free will, development of character, and choices of an individual would come into play. This has been some in 126.